I gave all my dead batteries away today, <laughs> free of charge. <laughs> so stupid, I love it. So in this video, we're gonna be going over important electric field equations, so what you're going to need. If you notice, this is gonna follow a very similar um, way and flow to the gravitational field equations, and there's no uh, surprise about that one. Electric fields and gravitational fields, uh, at least the equations look very, very similar. So we can actually treat them in a similar way. So for example, if we look at electric potential energy, just look with gravity, uh, how we said it was the work done to assemble it from infinite separation. Well, so it is for electric. We're going to have an equation for this. It's on our data booklet. So it goes EP equals K times Q1 times Q2 over R. This is the equation that we get. Uh, but what I like to use instead, I like to use a different version. Right? I like to use one that goes like this, just K times Q like big Q, little Q over R. Doesn't matter though, just so you understand these are different things here. So let's look at the different units. So E, and I should have put a little subscript P here, is electric potential energy. Well, that'll be in joules. K is a constant and you can look it up. So that's good. Q1, Q2, those are just charges. So those are measured in coulombs and R is a distance between them at that moment. So that means it's in meters. Now, what does this mean? If we look at this graph now, you can see that E is proportional to, well, the multiple of the charges here, the uh, product of the charges, but it's also inversely proportional to R. So that means a graph of one over X, for example, goes like this, you know, in this shape. So that means in this case right here, then it'll go like this. This will be how E P goes. It'll shape like this. And of course, what does that mean? Well, that means that if you go at R equals infinity, what's your E value? You can say that E P equals zero at R equals infinity, right? So when you're at a really big value of R, then you get zero uh, potential energy. But keep in mind, that's also uh, related to its definition, right? If it's work done to assemble it from infinite separation, if you have it at infinite uh, separation, then there should be no work done. So that means there should be no energy and that means this should be zero. So that's just why I'm trying to put them all together here. So again, just to remind you that this is all about EP, which is measured in joules. So now let's look at electric potential. Now, if you looked at circuits before, this at least should make more sense. This is what we call electric potential, so it's measured in volts. Uh, so this is your work done per unit charge to bring it from infinity to a point. So if I look at this one here now, this is gonna be related. You're gonna see the work equation. It's gonna make more sense here in a second. So we can look up in our data booklet what the equation here is, but it goes VE equals K times capital Q over R. That's because we're bringing a test charge right here, so that's why we have to have the charge of that test charge. It goes like this. But we also have an equation for work. The work done is also going to be Q times delta VE. This is going to be the work done. So this is all kind of related. So let's look at these different units first of all. Work done to move a charge. Well, work is in joules. All right, charges, those are in uh, coulombs. Distance is in meters. We've got this coulombs constant and electric potential is in volts. So let's look at what this right here would mean here. If we've got this equation, well, look, it's also a one over R equation. So this one here, for example, I could also draw it like this. Maybe I'll do it in yellow, it doesn't matter. But uh, I could draw it like this right here and it also goes one over R like that. There we go, and of course, well, the work done, uh, it can be measured, by the way, in joules or electron volts. And remember that one electron volt is uh, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Now, if you're not sure to find that, because it's not on your data book with this exact value here, um, I like to think about this equation right here. Uh, we can say that one EV equals, well, half MV squared. In other words, this right here is the kinetic energy of, for example, an electron that's been accelerated across a potential difference of one volt. And this is the charge of the electron. So it's like one times E, and you can look up, E is actually 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. So you say one times E times one volt, it turns out that gives you an answer in joules. And so that's why you can say one EV equals this many joules which is kind of interesting here. So instead of being a charge, you, you're used to seeing that, you know, one, uh, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, that's the elementary charge. And it, that's, for example, that number of coulombs, that's this E here. But it turns out when you go one E times V, then it gives you an answer in joules. But just so you know, at least is an important pro tip here. And also you have to know that, well, there's no work done if there's no change in electric potential. 
and that just comes from that equation. And I can show you that equation again. Is the equation here for work done? If there's no change in electric pot potential, if this is zero, well then work done has to be zero. Okay, what can we do with this? Well, now we can look at the electric field strength. Now this is E, which is in newtons per coulomb. We've seen this one at least before, uh, but we have a new equation for it now, and it goes like this: E equals negative V E over delta R. This is the equation then you can find in your data booklet. So what does that mean? Well, that means that well, we have the electric field strength here. Remember, that's measured in newtons per coulomb. We have the change in electric potential. That's delta VE. So that'll still be in volts. And the change in distance will be in meters. So there we go. That's actually pretty straightforward. We just have that equation. So now let's consider equipotential lines. This, an equipotential, is where VE is constant. That's how we define it. So let's look at what we mean here. So first of all, I want to actually maybe point out to the pro tip first. Okay, so again, no work done if you're on an equipotential. I'll explain that in a second. But let's look at this and hear what it means here. So equipotential lines are perpendicular to field lines. This is really important. So if I consider, I'll consider two different examples, okay? So just to separate these two, here we go. Let's just say I have a positive charge here. It's just sitting there, it's pinned here, it's right there. So what can I know about this? Well, I do know something about the electric field. The electric field lines across this, remember, uh, electric field lines are always defined as the direction that a positive test charge would go. So imagine I've got a little positive charge in my hand here, and I place it right here. Well, a positive doesn't like a positive, it's going to want to go away radially outwards. If I place it here, it's going to want to go up. If I place it here, it's going to want to go left. Here it goes to the down, and so on and so on. These are going to go radially outwards. Now these are your electric field. Now that's not the equipotentials, but I use the electric field to tell me how to draw these equipotentials because they are perpendicular to this. So that means, for example, that at this certain radius out here, for example, that will be an equipotential, and so will, for example, this one here. Like that will be an equipotential. So that's what's really important about these, okay? And you can kind of see that because you're going to have, you know, the same distance outwards. If that same distance, you know, if that distance is the same, you can go back here and see, well, what can we say about this? Hey, look, it's, it's, if it's got the same distance and it's the same single charge in the middle, then it's got to be the same potential. So that's why we say these are equipotentials. Now, charged plates might be more complicated. Let's see, how do the electric field lines go on a charged plate? Well, again, the electric field lines always go in the direction that a positive test charge would go. That's the definition. So if there's a plus here on the left, or minus on the right, then a plus would not want to go, like if I placed a little positive charge right here, it would want to fly away from that one and towards this one. And same here, and same here, and so on. So what could I say? I could say, well then my equipotential lines then are going to be perpendicular to that. So that means they're going to go like, uh, maybe like this, maybe straight down here. Maybe it's going to curve a little bit here, for example, just, we call these edge effects here. So just something like that. These are here will be your equipotentials. So just so you know, and it all depends on the different shape, but the key I would tell you is first start thinking like a positive charge. Put your positive charge somewhere, draw where it goes, that gets your electric field lines, and then your equipotentials are perpendicular to that. So they're 90 degrees to that. That I think is a good way to do it. So see, we've learned lots of important equations, right? We've learned first of all about equipotentials, we've learned about electric field strength, electric potential, and electric potential energy. It's important to keep all these three things separate in your mind because they they kind of all sound the same. So it's really important to start getting used to these different words here, okay?